Famed devout Catholic Joe Biden is under increasing pressure to answer for his support of abortion, now that the bishops are actually holding him accountable to the church's essential teaching. But Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, doesn't want to talk about any of that. Does the president believe that a 15-week-old unborn baby is a human being? Are you asking me if the president supports a woman's right to choose? He does. No, I love that woman. I love that reporter. Very simple. Does Joe Biden believe that babies are babies? Um, Do you mean uh, that uh, beep, boop, beep, boop, that Joe Biden supports women's right to choose reproductive health? Beep, boop, beep, boop. People are attacking Jen Psaki for the euphemisms and the evasion. But we should learn from her. We should learn from the left more broadly, which never accepts its opponent's language. We conservatives do that all the time, which is why on crucial matters, conservatives have been left speechless. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from yesterday is from Ogani Supreme, who says, this is, she's, she is now speaking as a leftist. How dare Catholics deny us pro-choicers the Eucharist? Also leftists. People who don't get the vaccine should not be allowed to leave their house. Yes, that's true. Isn't that so strange? My body, my choice, when the situation involves someone else's body and uh, one needs to have their own private conscience and not be told by their bishops anything about the unity of the physical and the metaphysical here on earth, communion here on earth. But if you don't get their, (laughs) if you don't go along with their orthodoxy, with the orthodoxies of secular progressivism, why then you are absolutely in trouble. And there's some troubling information that's coming out about the vaccine, which we will get to in just a second. But you know, if you're, if, if you suffer from nausea, if you, if you suffer because of whatever, anything from hangovers to chemotherapy, you've got to check out Relief Band. Relief Band is the number one FDA cleared anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting associated with motion sickness, anxiety, migraines, hangovers, morning sickness, chemotherapy, and so much more. The product is 100% drug-free, non-drowsy, and provides all-natural, long-lasting relief with zero side effects for as long as needed. How it works is that relief band stimulates a nerve in the wrist that travels to the part of the brain that controls nausea. Then it blocks the signal that your brain is sending to your stomach telling you that you are sick. It's amazing technology. If you know someone who deals with nausea, relief band makes a great gift. There are lots of imitators out there that don't really do anything. Relief band is the real deal, FDA cleared. Uh, it, for whatever reason you're experiencing nausea, this is a great way to, to not let the fear of nausea keep you on the sidelines. Right now, Relief Band has an exclusive offer just for Michael Knowles Show listeners. If you go to reliefband.com, use promo code Knowles, you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping and a no questions asked 30-day money back guarantee. Head on over to R-E-L-I-E-F-B-A-N-D.com. Use your promo code Knowles for 20% off plus free shipping. The left is really good at this. That reporter asked Jen Psaki that question in as blunt a way as possible. Does Joe Biden think babies are babies? Does he think that you shouldn't be able to kill an unborn baby in the womb? And what does Jen Psaki say? She doesn't blink. She doesn't miss a beat. She says, are you asking if he supports women's reproductive health care, a woman's right to choose? Yes, he does. Moving on, moving on. And you're the reporter's like, no, it's not what I'm asking, lady. Stop using your euphemisms. That's a ridiculous euphemism. A woman's right to choose. To choose what? does Joe Biden support the right to murder a guy in the street? Uh, he supports a criminal's right to choose, right? To choose what? There's <laughs> ch- choice is not the end in and of itself. You can choose good or evil. You can choose things that are illicit or things that are illicit. But Jen Psaki knows that if she grants the premise of the question, then they look like moral idiots or worse. So she can't do that. They're always so rigid on this. Uh, the, the question is coming up a lot now because the bishops are, are really growing a spine here and good on them. I don't, I don't mean to be uh, derisive about it. This is great that they're standing up to this nominally Catholic president on this issue. But liberals, secularists, you know, people on the left are really, really upset about it. On The View, Whoopi Goldberg had a word salad of euphemism and dishonesty to describe Joe Biden's abortion support. President Biden often speaks passionately about his Catholic faith, but U.S. bishops just overwhelmingly voted to move ahead 
with guidance that could deny him from receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion because of his presidential support of women having the right to choose. Now, you know, this, this is something that people were very concerned about when it came to John Kennedy many years ago, because they were concerned that if you had a Catholic president, you would end up with the, with the, with the Pope having more say uh, in what should be going on rather than having the president, who is not just the president of the Catholics, he is the president of everyone uh, having you know, these discussions. So I find it amazing that we haven't really heard much from these, from these gentlemen uh, about you know, anything that's going on with children or parents or immigration. I mean, so why do you think they are targeting him specifically on this matter, Sonny? Isn't this a political issue? Okay, this is so confused. Whoopi is so out of her depth here, but I suspect this is true of a lot of people, so I don't mean just to single her out. Notice in the same breath, she's criticizing the bishops for being too involved in political matters, right? Weighing in too much on this issue of abortion, but also not being involved enough in what she thinks should be their role discussing immigration or any other issue. She's accusing them of being too political, but also not political enough. And she, when she's making the first part of the argument, she says the fear when Kennedy was president is that if, if a president were not just nominally Catholic, but actually practiced his faith, were actually faithful to church doctrine, then the Pope would have undue influence in America. So you can't have some outside authority beyond the president having undue influence. But this is not just true for Catholics. This is true for any president. Everybody's got to serve somebody. If Whoopi is afraid that a Catholic president would give too much power to the Pope, obviously it's never happened in American history, didn't happen with Kennedy, who was a little loose about his religion, or, and it didn't happen with Joe Biden, who's very loose about his religion. But it's true with everyone. Joe Biden is nominally Catholic, actually progressive, and he's giving way too much influence, not to the pontiff in Rome, but to the pontiff of the Potomac, Dr. Fauci. <laughs> Dr. Fauci, the, the leading authority who Joe Biden said could not be fired. No one, he would not under any circumstances fire Dr. Fauci. He would listen to the science. Dr. Fauci is the embodiment of the science. He's the vicar of science on earth. And uh, this man is the, not just scientific, but moral, ethical, political arbiter. Right? Everybody's got to serve somebody. The question is, what religion are you following and what priests are you following? <laughs> the priests of the, the traditional religion, the priests of the church, or the priests of the laboratory and progressivism. Then Whoopi says, these bishops, why are they, why are they weighing in here on a question of abortion when they're not weighing in on immigration? First of all, they do weigh in on, on these other sorts of issues. Uh, but even accepting Whoopi's premise here, abortion is a different kind of issue. As Pope St. John Paul II said, abortion is not just one right among many, or the right to life rather is not just one right among many. It's not just like, well, look, you disagree with the church on abortion and I disagree with the church on, I don't know, taxes or something. So it's all the same, right? First of all, I don't think the church has a stance on taxes, but certainly not a clear one. Uh, but even if that were the case, Abortion is the prerequisite, or life rather, is the prerequisite right. And abortion violates that right. And it's why it is so specific. Okay. Then she makes the final really stupid point. She said, these bishops are not acting religiously. They're acting politically. And Chris Hahn, who is a Democrat employed by Fox News, made this same very, very stupid point the other day. Get this canard out of your head. I know you've heard it a lot, but get it out of your head. The church shouldn't be political or some derivation of that. We need a firm separation between church and state or religion and politics shouldn't go together. All politics is religious. All lawmaking involves morality. All states have some relationship to the church, some relationship to religion, because the state assumes and enforces certain religious principles. 
even in our own enlightened country, a country founded on an idea. Some people think that the country was founded merely on an idea, but even that idea that it was supposedly strictly founded on presumes the existence of God. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. And they're not talking about Allah and they're not talking about Shiva. They're talking about the broadly Christian understanding of God. Okay. Religion is political. The Pope runs a country. Uh, it, lest you have forget, <laughs> the Pope is the head of a state. Okay. And politics just means public life. So if you do anything in public, I know that the left wants to relegate religion to the dark cor corners of the town in a little church on one day a week. And even that, they're going to close the church and they're going to force us all at home to, to, to really just make religion something that happens in our own heads. But it is a public thing. It involves the public. Megan McCain, who is, the, I guess, the most conservative person on The View, she came out strongly in opposition to abortion. If you are a devout Catholic, as President Biden claims to be, abortion is a cardinal sin that can do deep spiritual harm to you. And President Biden had been um, supportive of the Hyde Amendment up until 2019 when he decided to run for president. And the Hyde Amendment means that the government would provide federal funding for abortion uh, or wouldn't. And now he is for it. And he has shown in this upcoming uh, budget that he is for it. And I think that sort of has been the threshold. I remember when it happened, um, having a conversation with a, a friend of mine who was close to him saying, for me, this is a deep paradigm shift for, for how I view President Biden. Because if he's for the federal funding of abortion, and I know the women on this show disagree with me, but as far as I'm concerned, abortion is murder, and that means the government funding of killing of the unborn, and we have to, as uh, pro-lifers, fight for the rights of the unborn. And that is a doctrine that's as old as the Catholic Church itself. So he has to choose. That's true. And he does have to choose. You do have to make moral decisions. You do have to own up to your own judgments and then move on. Notice how clear what Megan said was and notice how garbled what Whoopi said was. But the Whoopi euphemisms and the Whoopi slogans, that's what's pervaded our culture because the left has pushed them, they've brainwashed us, and they've rendered us, you might say, speechless. Not just, but where's my bell? Do I not get, there we go. They rendered us speechless, not just by overt censorship, but by a sort of pre-censorship that, that warps our thoughts and turns us into pudding heads. You know, if you want to protect against all sorts of crazy stuff, you definitely need to get Ring. There are a thousand reasons to protect your home. All your stuff, first of all, and all your family. That's another thing. And maybe you want to protect against the bad guys who could come over. Maybe you want to protect against your in-laws. I don't know. There are, I, I'm just throwing it out there. You want to know who's at your doorstep. And you can, you can do that with Ring. Ring allows you to see and speak to whoever is at your door. It actually allows you con to control every inch of your home. Whether you are in your home, whether you are at your office, whether you are on the road. You know, I'm on the road sometimes. I love to know that sweet little Elisa and cute little baby June, that little bundle of joy, can know who is on the other side of the door before they open that door. It gives me peace of mind. It gives me peace of mind that my friends can be safe, knowing that I gave them this as a housewarming gift. And I can be happy knowing that I didn't pay that much money because it's not very expensive. Start protecting your home today with a ring alarm. Go to ring.com slash Knowles to get your ring alarm security kit today. You can build a system that's right for your home. Have it up and running in minutes. That's ring.com slash Knowles. Ring.com slash Knowles. The, the ladies on The View, with the exception of Meghan McCain, are denying the humanity of babies in order to shill for Joe Biden, who is scandalously in violation of church, the church's teaching, the church that he claims to uh, belong to. Uh, but they're not the only ones. Biden's not the only one. Speaking of denying humanity, Don Lemon is making some pretty audacious claims in the Washington Post. He just gave an interview and he's gone back to this race hustling narrative that has been so successful for the left. And he says that white people do not see black people as fully human. Here's the line. He says, we're living in two different realities as black and white people. This is a very important idea. We're living in two different realities as black and white people. I feel like I've had to, to do that, to speak out on these issues, because I don't think America has seen enough people like me. 
I don't think America intimately knows enough people like me. I would love America to see black people, especially black gay men, as, and I hate this word, normal, and as human beings and as part of the culture. That we have our vulnerabilities and our struggles, but we also have our successes. We love, we hurt, and we go through trials and tribulations just like anyone else. What is this, the Merchant of Venice? What is the, does a Don Lemon not bleed? Does a Don Lemon not feel? I don't know if America sees black people and especially black gay men as fully human and as deserving of the American dream. You know, Don Lemon is wrong about a great many things and he's extremely whiny and his perception of the world is extremely distorted and wrong. But he's right on this point. He's right on this point. The mainstream view in America, which is dictated by the left because the left controls the institutions and therefore controls our words and controls our minds, you might say. Thank you. Uh, The mainstream view on the left is that black people are not fully human. Of course they're not. The, the, according to the intersectional left, and you know, intersectionality is, is one component of critical race theory, this idea that uh, oppression sort of multiplies upon itself. So a black guy is oppressed and a woman is oppressed, but a black woman is especially oppressed. And a black woman is oppressed and a gay person is oppressed, but a black lesbian is especially oppressed and a black lesbian is oppressed, and a Muslim is oppressed, but a black lesbian Muslim is especially oppressed, right? And there's no end to this this, uh, hierarchy of victimhood. According to that radical ideology, the only fully human people are straight white guys, specifically straight white guys who know that they are guys who are Christian, who are, you know, it kind of goes in the other direction as well. The reason for that is, according to this radical leftist ideology, White guys are the only people that possess free will and intellect. According to the the left, the will of all non-white, non-male people has been compromised by the oppression and the outright enslavement uh, at the hands of white guys. And so that takes care of your will. And as for your intellect, for the handful of black conservatives or woman conservatives or homosexual conservatives or this, that, or the other thing, they are actually not conservative. They're just totally deluded and brainwashed. They're laboring under what the Western Marxists would call a false consciousness. This is a term that became very popular during the second wave of feminism in the 1970s, that you would have these wine and cheese soirees, as I call them, W-H-I-N-E. These women, perfectly happy, well-adjusted women would go hang out with their radical witchy friends and they'd go complain about their lives. And then, and this is written about in a very famous essay called the, the personal is political, something to that effect. I write about it at length in my upcoming book, Speechless, which is available for order today. (laughs) I think you can still get a signed copy, but I'm not sure. We have a live signing event tonight, so you can check it out then. Uh, These soirees would involve women going. They they were perfectly happy with their families and their husbands and their kids. And then they'd leave and they would actually say, wow, I had no idea how oppressed I was. Man, I'm furious now. (laughs) I'm really, I'm really upset. This is terrible. So that false consciousness Alleged false consciousness is what the radicals in the Western Marxist tradition that gives us political correctness and wokeism and cancel culture, that is what they're fighting against. Now, in in my view, the perfectly happy, well-adjusted women were not operating under a false consciousness. They were actually happy and well-adjusted. And now, because of the advent of this insane ideology, that is actually forcing them under a false consciousness because they believe, people like Don Lemon believe, that they are oppressed. Someone can be speaking on CNN, can be a very wealthy, very famous guy who is only given a wonderful adulation in the culture, in the mainstream culture, who has places that he goes to in the Hamptons, and he can pretend that he's oppressed. To me, I, mean, I don't know. I'm no expert. It would seem to me that that view is the false consciousness, not the other one. But he is right on the narrow point. In the mainstream culture, which is dictated by the liberal establishment, only white men are seen as fully human. That's not the fault of conservatives. That's not the fault of Trump supporters. That's not the fault of white men. It's the radicals on the left who are pushing that idea. This racial ideology is forcing some really funny ideas uh, you know, they're fu- it's dark and it's sad, but it's still funny. You have to laugh at it. Lynn manuel Miranda, he's the Broadway guy who wrote Hamilton. Uh, he's the Broadway guy who 
wrote In the Heights, a very important figure in the current New York theater scene. Lin-Manuel Miranda now had a movie made of In the Heights. This is a movie exclusively about racial minorities. This is a, this is a movie about Dominicans up in Washington Heights. He's now been forced to apologize because the Hispanics that he used, the Dominicans that he used, were not black enough. You know, there are various shades of Hispanics, just like there are various shades of all sorts of people. And the radical left is upset that the, the variety of Hispanic that he chose was a little too light, wasn't dark enough for their tastes. And so instead of saying, hey, you lunatics, I made an entire musical and movie about racial minorities. Hey, you lunatics. I made another musical where I turned all the founding fathers black. Hey, you lunatics. I am a, a left winger, albeit a, one who sort of seems to like America, at least more than the radical, the, the real ideologues do. Give me a little break here. Cut me some slack. No, he goes in and apologizes. Bill Maher, who is a liberal, but he's a liberal in a little more of an old school way, he is furious about this, and he said that nothing, nothing is ever good enough for the Democrats. If Lynn manuel Miranda is going to be thrown out, then there's simply no pleasing these people. There's Latinx performers, one black lead, but no Afro-Latinx. The committee that makes note of everyone's skin tone discovered this, and then Lynn manuel Miranda had to say, I'm truly sorry, I'm learning from the feedback, I thank you for raising it, and I'm listening. I promise to do better in my future projects. This is what I was talking about with Nikki. Please, stop the apologizing. You're the guy who made the founding fathers black and Hispanic. I don't think you have to apologize to Twitter. For f- sake. This is why people hate Democrats. It's cringy. No, look, he's wrong. He's right that it's cringy. He's right that this is insane. He's right that it's so ridiculous. But he's wrong that this is why people hate Democrats. This is why Democrats are successful. Because they never give an inch. They never go off script. They never accept Republican premises. They never accept the premises of reality. I'm not just talking Republican premises, you know, like babies are babies. Okay. It seems like that's just a premise of reality, but let's go even further. Let's go even more to what we just see with our own eyes. The left will not accept the plain fact that men are not women. The most controversial line that's ever gotten me in trouble. I've gotten in trouble for a few lines, most of which in my view have been true. But the one that's really gotten me in trouble is the idea that men are not women. And the left insists on this. They stick to their guns. When they're pushing their radical ideology, nobody is safe. It's not like, well, hey, that's fair. We'll meet in the middle. You've gone far enough. You know, that's kind of the Republican attitude. The Democratic attitude is no. Uh Uh-uh. Oh, you made a whole musical only about racial minorities, only in this minority neighborhood, and the whole cast is non-white. Yeah, they're still too white. (laughs) Yeah, all the, the, how there's no white people? Yeah, well, the non-white people are still too white. Darker. Go darker, Lynn. Cry, grovel, beg, shine my shoes, Lynn. (laughs) That's the way that they think. And one cannot deny that that strategy has been successful. Maybe, just maybe, conservatives could learn from this. We make fun of it. We should. But we should we should laugh about it, but not in the just dismissive way that Bill Maher is laughing about. We need to take it seriously because the fact is it's been successful and we should try to be successful too. One place where you can learn about this strategy and how to combat it in a way that you know exactly where I'm going, control room. You know exactly where I'm going, Bill. One way that you can finally try to turn this around. Conservatives have fallen for a trap. We're going to try to reverse that. Is by reading my upcoming book, Speechless. Oh, it's not upcoming anymore. It's it's come. It's arrived. It's here today. It's available everywhere, bookstores, online. It also happens to be Amazon Prime Day. So right now, the there it's crazy, but it's changing like every hour. Some days, you know, at some points the the book is twenty five percent off, but the, every so often they'll run one of these crazy Prime sales where you can get it for like forty or even more percent off. So anyway, you can check it out on on Amazon. You can get it today. You can still get a signed copy of Speechless at premiercollectibles.com slash speechless. 
before my live signing tonight. So I've got a live signing tonight. I know some people still wanted to get signed first editions. You can get it, but this is your last chance. So you've got to head on over there within the next few hours. The book, of course, Speechless Controlling Words, Controlling Minds, virtual live signing tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Central. And you can go to premiercollectibles.com slash speechless before the signing, which will be streaming at dailywire.com and the Daily Wire YouTube, Daily Wire Facebook. And if you do pre-order a copy, don't forget to type in a question when you check out so that you can tune in, and then I can hopefully answer your question. And if I can't answer it, I'll be rendered speechless. <laughs> and either way, you'll still receive a copy with my John Hancock, premiercollectibles.com slash speechless. And tune in tonight at 7.30 Eastern. We'll be right back with a lot more. The way that you can know that the left's political strategy, which is a cultural strategy, which is a religious strategy, which is a verbal strategy, right? So I know that we're now supposed to see huge distinctions between religion and politics and culture and politics and this and that. It's kind of all, kind of all blends a little bit together. The way you can tell the left has been very successful, specifically on the word front, is how quickly radical ideas have been mainstreamed. The clearest example of this this weightlifter who goes by the name Laurel Hubbard, I don't know his real name, but he's now going by the name Laurel. He will become <laughs> the first transgender athlete to compete at the Olympics after being selected by New Zealand for the women's event at the Tokyo Games. Uh, this is a decision about the fairness and the inclusion. This fella is a, a big, burly dude, okay? And he's going to compete against very fit women, but he is going to be bigger and burlier than they are because he's a man and men are bigger and stronger than women. And I suspect none of those things that I've just said are permitted any longer. I may be able to stay on social media, but I certainly wouldn't be allowed to say such a thing at a cocktail party or in a corporate HR room or in the halls of government or in a public school. We're not really allowed to say these plain facts anymore, but it is insane that a big burly dude is going to engage in a weightlifting competition next to women and he's going to do very, very well. And we're all supposed to pretend that this is a wonderful, shocking, historic thing. South Park mocked this idea just two years ago. This was a punchline on South Park just two years ago. Joining me now is the current champion of the strong woman competition, strong woman. Miss woman, do you feel ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready, David. There are just so many amazing women athletes out here today. It makes me so proud. Now, this is the first year that a trans woman is in the competition. How do you feel about that? Amazing. I feel honored to be a part of history. I have a lot of incredible trans friends who are athletes, and so we're all inspired this woman's competing. Uh-huh. And uh, have you actually ever met Heather Swanson? Uh, no, I've never competed against her before, no. She's not exactly your average trans athlete. Well, what is an average trans athlete? Honestly, I find that kind of bigoted, David. Okay. Heather Swanson is actually joining us now. Miss Swanson, how does it feel to be competing today? I can't tell you how free I feel now that I've started identifying as a woman. Now that I can compete as female, I'm ready to smash the other girls. <laughs> and is it correct you just started identifying as female two weeks ago? I'm not here to talk about my transition. <laughs> I'm here to kick some f***ing ass. <laughs> Sir, it's still funny, right? It's still funny, but now it's not satire. Now it's reality. <laughs> that is happening. And it's not just at some random competition in the middle of nowhere. That is happening at the Olympics now. That guy, maybe without the beard, is this, but this giant burly dude with big muscles is going to be competing against a woman. And we're all going to have to pretend that that's totally normal and fine and good, actually. And then when he does very, very well at the competition, uh, we all have to pretend that that's an amazing historic thing. Sometimes you will hear from the left that no, there is no evidence that trans women do any better or have any unfair advantage against real women. They wouldn't call them real women. They'd say it's just another variety of woman. 
That is just fake. There was a, a random Twitter account called Rip X for Nutmeg <laughs> that posted a little thread on this last night. Just and this is just a handful. We do, we do not have time to go through all of the examples. Uh, 1998 to 2012, Laurel Hubbard, that guy who's now going to be at the Olympics, failed to qualify for a single international men's tournament as a professional weightlifter. 2013, Hubbard transitions, quote unquote, at age 35. And from 2014 to 2021, Hubbard qualifies for 11 international women's tournaments, including the Olympics. I think he got an advantage. I don't know. I'm no expert. 2017, CC Telfer is ranked 390th among male NCAA Division II athletes in the 400 meter hurdles. Uh, in 2018, Telfer transitions to pretend to be a woman. 2019, Telfer is a national NCAA Division II women's 400 hurdle champion. 2021, Telfer hopes to qualify for the Olympics. 2013 to 2015, ha- Hannah Mouncey made 22 appearances for the Australian men's handball team, scoring zero goals. 2015, Mouncey transitions. In 2018, amid controversy, Mouncey is allowed to play six times for the Australian women's handball team, scoring 23 goals. Huh. Well, I think he might have, I think Hannah may have gotten a little advantage there, maybe from his physique and his biochemistry. Before 2015, golfer Haley Davidson won zero men's tournaments. Doesn't even look like he qualified for any tournaments. 2015, he transitions. 2021, Davidson becomes the first male to win a women's professional golf tournament. 2019, Mary Gregory, Mary, who had transitioned as an adult, takes up, just takes it up professional women's weightlifting, and at his first tournament, won all nine events at the 100% Raw Weightlifting Federation competition and broke four world records in the process. Just kind of took it up one day, but you know, she transitioned. So it's totally, totally kosher. Uh, You all remember Fallon Fox before 2006. Fallon Fox was in the U.S. Navy. He's a dude. Then he transitioned. And then from 2012 to 2014, he becomes an MMA fighter. He won all but one of his fights. And in one fight, he cracked cracked a woman's skull open. The list goes on. I mean, I have so many more examples of this here. Do not let them tell you that there is no evidence. There's never been an example of a trans woman having an advantage over another woman, over a cisgendered woman. It's just not true. They obviously have a built-in advantage. They win or come very close to winning almost every time under some extremely extenuating circumstances. Like like some, some, some of these guys will take up the sport way late, but they'll still do better than the women. Why? Because they're bigger and stronger. This is not only being mainstreamed at the Olympics. I don't watch the Olympics. I just don't care. I know that, you know, some people, especially libs, really like the Olympics because it's like a kumbaya thing where we're all supposed to hold hands and we're all supposed to pretend that every country on earth is exactly the same. And even though all the strongest, richest, toughest people and, and, the, and the best athletes, by the way, from all the other countries just come to America because there's more opportunity here, then we'll kind of send them back or we'll, we'll all try to pretend it's all the same. Kumbaya, right? I, I don't go for that. I don't really care. Uh, however, this radical ideology is not just going to be at the Olympics. It's going to be coming to your veterans hospital. The VA is now spending your money, your taxpayer money, to mutilate sexually confused people. Wow, it's amazing how the military has changed in recent years, really changed. Do you remember, I mean, Bill Clinton signed Don't Ask, Don't Tell, right? It it wasn't that long ago that matters of sex simply were not discussed in the U.S. military. Now, your taxpayer dollars are going to the Pentagon and the Pentagon is going to pay to chop off perfectly healthy appendages on very confused men, but I suppose some women as well. Secretary Dennis McDonough over at the Department of the VA announced at a Pride Month event that they will engage in this surgery, but I don't, I'm not even talking about the surgery itself at the moment. You know, that is what it is. Just listen to the language. The secretary will now spend funds on, quote, gender confirmation surgery because he says this was, is, quote, the right thing to do to meet the surgical needs of transgender veterans. None of those phrases mean what he thinks they mean. Those phrases are all being used to mean the opposite of those phrases. The gender confirmation surgery is being used to, to attempt to negate the gender of these people. A, g- a gender confirmation for a man who thinks that he's a woman is to, I don't know, put a baseball hat and a tank top on him and say, you're a dude. 
hey, bro, <laughs> that, there's, that's the procedure. You're a man. You think you're a woman. Well, here's a cigar and uh, you know, some grilling utensils. You definitely are a man. We are confirming your gender, right? If you've got the man who thinks he's a woman and you mutilate him to make him look like a woman, that is gender negation surgery. That's gender undermining surgery. You can't totally negate it anyway. It's not possible because it's the right thing to do. It's manifestly the wrong thing to do. Our, our bodies have a purpose. Now, all physical things have some kind of purpose. They have a T loss. So if you're mutilating that and injuring a perfectly healthy body part, that would be the, the wrong thing to do. And it does not meet the surgical needs. A perfectly healthy organ has no surgical needs. And if you're going to chop it up and mutilate it, pump it full of chemicals, that would be quite the opposite. But the left uses this kind of language. And now we all use this language too. We all do it. We do, you know, <laughs> that reminds me, that bell, of a certain book that you can order, not pre-order. You can order it right now, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. We all use this language. We, and it, you know, we use the transgender language. We use perfectly conservative people. We'll refer to Bruce Jenner as Caitlin and refer to him as her. And they'll get angry with me when I don't do that. There have been people who wrote in because I commented on Blair White, whom I like very much. Blair White's a very nice fella, but they're very upset that I won't call Blair White a she. And people will write into me, ostensibly conservative people, and they will say, Michael, why do you have to be a jerk about it? I'm not saying you have to believe that Blair is a woman. You know, Blair is this man who identifies as a woman. You don't need to believe that Blair is a woman, but you don't need to be a jerk and call him a man. Hold on. You're telling me I'm a jerk because I'm stating a plain fact because I'm telling the truth. If I tell the truth, I'm a jerk, but what? If I lie, I'm compassionate, I'm a nice guy? I don't think that's true. I think that's a, le a left-wing premise that you have unwittingly adopted. Well, Michael, look, Blair doesn't think that he's a woman, but you can at least refer to him as a woman, as, as I'm doing. It's she, buddy. No. That's the, I, don't, I really don't. My, my problem is not with Blair White or Bruce Jenner, for that matter. My problem's with you because <laughs> you're adopting that language and you're insisting that all the rest of us live in lies as well. And when you do that, when you accept the, the pronoun, which you, and I'm speaking broadly to the squishy conservative types out there, or even the honestly naive types out there, when you say the pronouns are not a big deal, when the left says the pronouns are not a big deal, the more you say it, the more intensely you say it, the more I'm convinced it is a big deal. The more the left spends its time and resources and money trying to get us all to use the wrong pronouns, the more I'm convinced that it's a big deal because the left obviously thinks that it is. Speaking of dubious medical treatments, there's a headline here. I'm probably not even allowed to read this headline. Uh, it's a headline that came out. It says, 19-year-old college freshman dies from heart problem one month after second dose of Moderna vaccine. I have heard many of these stories anecdotally people who, not who have died necessarily, but people who have had serious adverse reactions after having had the vaccine, some of which were pretty dire, some of which required hospitalization. And this is just from friends of mine and certainly from many friends of friends, but the plural of anecdote is not data, we are told. And I'm sure that you've heard of people like this too. And we've seen a lot of news stories about this, of teenagers and people in their 20s suffering from myocarditis, inflammation of the heart after receiving the COVID vaccine. And yet we are still told we all have to get the COVID vaccine. We know that this is an experimental drug that is being pushed on us by the media, by the medical establishment, by the public health authorities, by the government, by big tech, by everybody. Why? My argument on the vaccine is not that it's going to cause us all to grow a tail and get better cell reception with all the 5G going through our blood, right? It's not on that side of it necessarily. It's also not on the side that we all need to get the vaccine. My argument is make a prudential judgment. If you're not at great risk, why would you do it? I don't, I don't see why I would do it. I don't see, I, I might have to do it in order to travel. I might have to do it because the establishment is, is making it so onerous that one cannot live one's life, right? So I suppose that, that factors in too. But just as a purely medical matter, I don't see any reason why a young person would get this thing. And I, I suspect the liberal establishment would agree with me in private. In fact, I sort of know that they would. The public health authorities are forcing 
as best they can, everybody to get these vaccines, no matter what risk they have from the COVID itself. The public health authorities that have lied to us about virtually every aspect of this virus, lied to us about their views of the masks, lied to us about the relationship to the Wuhan laboratory, lied to us about the manipulation by human beings of this virus that we were told was naturally occurring. They've lied, 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 lied. Now we're told, hey, take the experimental drug. You have to, and if you don't, you're anti-science. If you don't, you're killing grandma or something. The public health authorities are forcing perfectly healthy people at very low risk to do it. And yet, and yet, when, when that guidance interferes with their other political priorities, they totally ditch it. So, for instance, there's a a rule uh, called Title 42. This is a Trump era policy that permitted immigration officials to turn back illegal aliens because of the pandemic. You'd think we could turn down illegal aliens because they're illegal aliens and they shouldn't be coming into our country. You'd think we'd be able to do that. But no, this country is so beyond the the scope of law and order at this point, that we're not allowed to do that unless we invoke this special provision and say, hey guys, I, I'm, I'm so sorry that Mr. Coyote, that we have to uh, uh, actually enforce our laws right now, but we just told everyone that there's a super duper dangerous global pandemic that's going to kill everyone if they leave their homes. Uh, so uh, w- would you mind just if you, if you go home for a little bit and then maybe come back a little bit later? Well, the Biden administration isn't even going to continue to enforce that according to reports. They're just going to let everyone come in. So you're telling me, <laughs> you're telling me that the virus is so super duper dangerous that we can't leave our house for a year, more year and a half. You're telling us that it's so super duper dangerous that perfectly healthy people need to get the experimental drug that's had all of these anecdotes associated with it of, of adverse side effects. But then you're telling me that the pandemic is so innocuous. You're telling me that the virus is so uh, without danger that we're just going to flood the country with illegal aliens who are untested, who are carrying any number of viruses with them. Which is it? Which is it? It's contradictory because it's not about any medical fact. It's obviously about political power. This is probably not going to play well with voters. There's some encouraging news uh, out of the Western Conservative Summit on the issues that are really affecting conservatives. The top five most important issues, according to a straw poll at, at this Western Conservative Summit, are immigration and border security, 82%, election integrity with 79%, religious freedom with 75%, the federal budget and deficit with 74%, and gun rights at 74%. Notice what's not on the list. What's not on the list is tax cuts for multinational corporations. Conservatives aren't that concerned about that. Republican officials might be concerned about that, but uh, actual conservative voters are not. Uh, making Juneteenth a federal holiday. That's, it's, it's not on the list. I don't, I'm looking the five most important issues. You'd think that making Juneteenth a federal holiday would be up. It's not. It's so weird because it passed unanimously in the Senate and all but, I think, 15 Republicans in the House voted for it. And yet it doesn't, it doesn't show up. It doesn't make it. You'll notice that letting men into the ladies room, that's not on the list. That's so strange. What is on the list? immigration, enforcing our basic laws, having a country. That's what that means, right? Hey, if you have, if you don't have a border, you don't have a country. Election integrity. Oh, Republicans don't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. We're not allowed to talk about that, are we? We're not allowed to say that maybe there was something a little weird about the 2020 election. Maybe it's a little weird that states violated their own election laws. In in the case of Pennsylvania, violated the state constitution. Are we allowed to say that? No, maybe I'll be kicked off YouTube. Maybe I will be rendered speechless. I don't know. Thank you. It was a little slow, but we got it on time. Now there's something else coming out of this Western Conservative Summit. In the straw poll, Governor Ron DeSantis, who's obviously running very hard for the presidency right now, he came out on top. He won the straw poll for who conservative voters at the summit want to see as the nominee in 2024. He beat out President Trump. This is pretty big stuff. So The top five candidates in order of highest approval to least, Ron DeSantis, followed by Donald Trump, followed by Ted Cruz, followed by Pompeo, followed by Tim Scott. This might create some difficulties. Uh, DeSantis and Trump get along very well right now, it would appear. But if 
if DeSantis is a real threat to Trump and Trump really wants to run again, that could create some problems. Also worth pointing out, Ron DeSantis, I, look, he's doing great stuff. I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm saying as a knock on DeSantis. He's, he's really doing an excellent job in Florida. I'm just pointing out a fact of the presidential process. He has not been at the national level for very long yet. And so it's, he's got to go through the ringer in order to really, for, for people to know that he's a really strong candidate. He has to win re-election next year in Florida. And he's, he's going to have a serious race. He's going to have a very well-funded Democrat, Nikki Freed, who's the current ag commissioner running against him. So he's going to have to focus on that for a little bit. If he can make it through that, if he can make it through the first stages of the primary process, then he's going to be a tougher candidate. Is Trump going to start attacking him? I don't know. But the thing about someone like Trump or someone like Cruz is they really have been through the ringer. Obviously, they're at this point, they're pretty tough. They're pretty Teflon. So you, you, you could see an interesting dynamic where Trump and DeSantis are running in the same lane. If Cruz runs, I don't have any special knowledge. I, know I host a show with the guy, but I, I don't, uh, you know, I'm not telling any tales out of school. If he runs, and I have encouraged him to, he's kind of in his own lane. Pompeo, I think, would kind of be in his own lane because he'd be running from the foreign policy side. Uh, and Tim Scott is from the more moderate ring of the party. So he'd be in his own lane. The trickier thing is for Trump and DeSantis because they're really both going for the same, the same lane. Mike Pence actually, believe it or not, was heckled at the Faith and Freedom Conference that just went on. Uh, people are very upset that he did not stop the, the ratification of the electoral votes in 2020. That might harm him. Who knows if he's going to run or not? It seems like he may run. Uh, there is some good news coming out of Georgia. Also, i got to get this in. Georgia is preparing to cut 100,000 names from its voter rolls as a list maintenance effort. There are just a lot of people who moved out of state who died who are still on the voter rolls. They need to be cut off. We're going to be told that this is an attack on voting rights and our democracy. No, don't do it. Don't give in. Don't use their language. Got to fight tooth and nail, folks. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how good our candidates are going to be in 2022 or 2024. If they control the political process, if they control the established institutions, if they control our words, if they control our minds, they will leave us speechless. Go order. Don't pre-order. Order speechless today. Thank you to everyone who has pre-ordered. Really appreciate it. I really want to stick it in the nose. In the nose? Is that an expression? I really want to stick it in the eye of the squishy Republicans. I really want to stick it in the eye of perhaps even the New York Times bestseller list. Let's, let's try to do that. That would be uh, extremely delightful. And I hope that it will help us start winning in the future. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. I'll see you tomorrow. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Ben Davies. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Our technical director is Austin Stevens. Supervising producers, Mathis Glover and Robert Sterling. Production manager, Pavel Vidovsky. Editor and associate producer, Danny D'Amico. Audio mixer, Mike Coromina. Hair and makeup by Nika Geneva and production coordinator, McKenna Waters. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2021. Today on The Ben Shapiro Show, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse gets caught with his hand in the racist cookie jar but faces no consequences. Democrats begin to walk back their radical voting proposals, and New York City votes for mayor. That's today on The Ben Shapiro Show. Give it a listen. Listen.